Hello, everybody. My name is Michelle Jones, and I would love to welcome you to today's workshop. We're so excited to have you here with us. And first, I'd like to introduce you to Diana Fleming. She, has, she is our PhD nutritionist here at Full Plate Living. Hi, Diana. Hi, Michelle, and welcome, everybody. We're really excited that you're going to delve a little bit deeper into macronutrients. So those are carbohydrates, fats, and protein because I know so many of us have questions about how many of them do we really need in order to be healthy. So thank you for being here today to cover that. So welcome. I'm seeing so many of you in the chat already. So excited that you're using it. Yeah. Remember to keep using it during the workshop. And at this time, Diana, I'm just going to turn things over to you. Let's get started. Yes, let's. So as you can see, our subject is, are you eating enough carbohydrates? fat and protein. So I'm sure at some point you have wondered things like this. How many grams of carbohydrate should I eat? How much fat is healthy? Is there a certain level of protein I need? So that is what we're going to explore. And when we talk about carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, we are talking about macronutrients. I know you've probably all heard this term, we usually, for short, we usually call them macros. And uh, macros are nutrients we need to eat in larger amounts on a daily basis because they provide the energy for all the cells of the body to perform all the thousands and thousands of things they do for us to be alive and well. So that's why we think about macros in grams. Um, and this is metric weight versus micronutrients. Macro means big, micro means small. Micronutrients, these would be the vitamins and minerals, and those we need in milligram and microgram amounts. So a milligram is a thousandth of a gram, a microgram is a millionth of a gram. So the amount of vitamins and minerals we need is very small, but very important. Um, so I'm just contrasting the macros with the micros. We're gonna focus on macros, obviously, in this talk. So the Institute of Medicine is now called the National Academy of Medicine. Um, I'm using the older name because people are more familiar with that. But, you know, we gotta work our way to the, now the National Academy of Medicine. This is a group, it's, it's a non-governmental, non-profit group of expert researchers, doctors, scientists, and they look at the evidence and they make evidence-based recommendations for policymakers, for educators, for individuals, and they have come up based on a scientific evidence with a range for carbohydrate intake, fat intake, and protein intake as a percent of your total calories. So this is the evidence-based macronutrient recommendations for adults as a percent of daily calories. Now, before I repeat these numbers, which you can see, these are for adults, generally healthy adults. These are not recommendations for people that have some disease process that they're challenged with or uh, certain infections. Situations like that require, sometimes require changes in how many carbs, fats, and proteins um, that we would be eating. And of course, if you have a, a challenge with your health, you definitely want to be working with your doctor or other professional, appropriate professional, healthcare professional to help you with that. But we are focusing on otherwise healthy adults. So 45 to 65% of calories should come from carbohydrates, 20 to 35% uh, from fat, and 10 to 35% from protein. So 45 to 65 carbohydrate, 20 to 35 fat, protein 10 to 35. Now, what is the purpose of these recommendations? You already know one purpose, we need to meet our body's energy needs. So these recommendations based on evidence help us adults meet our energy needs 
while minimizing the risk of chronic disease. So obviously the amount of carbohydrate, fat, and protein we, we take in uh, not only should provide us with ener energy, but should keep us healthy. So, you know, we don't want excessive extremes or excessive deficits in, in, uh, in these uh, macronutrients. And notice there's a range there, right? It's not one number. That range provides flexibility and diversity in your dietary planning. Obviously, we all have personal preferences in taste and, in, in, you know, sometimes uh, ethnicity preferences sometimes religious preferences. So when there's a range there, it allows for people to express those preferences, the diversity of preferences and have some flexibility. And let me repeat, specific conditions of diseases may need special nutritional guidelines and these will be provided for a qualified health, by a qualified health professional. So you wanna work with your doctor or other qualified health professional if you are challenged with a disease or an adverse health condition. Okay, so here's the key question around what we're, we're gonna to try to answer um, through the rest of this presentation. Is eating the right quantity of macros the key to a healthy diet? Now, I know maybe you've been there, I've been there, uh, a while back, people, uh, you know, ask us questions. What are the macros? If I just meet my macros, if I'm in the range, everything is good. So, you know, say the macros for carbohydrates are 45 to 65 percent in calories. You're getting 55 percent of your calories from carb. You're good. That's all you have to think about. Uh, you know, your fats are maybe 30 percent in calories. You're good. And your protein is like 15 percent. You're good. Is that all there is to it? Well, I would like to submit to you, we would like to submit to you here at Full Plate Living, that is not all there is to it. And here's the reason why. Not all carb, fat, and protein calories are created equal in terms of their impact on the body and your risk of disease over the long run. Um, so, well, paying attention to the quantity of macros is a good idea. What research studies show, this is so important, please don't miss this. What research studies show is that the quality of your macro calories is ultimately more important than the quantity. That's because the quality has the strongest impact on your health outcomes, on how healthy your life is. Uh, and whether you're going to develop a disease. So when you look at research, the quality of the macros trumps the actual quantity. Am I saying you shouldn't be concerned about quantity? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that we need to pay more attention to the quality of the carbs we're eating, the quality of the fats we're eating, the quality of the proteins we're eating, not just eating carbs, fats, and proteins of any kind, shape, or form. So this is what we're gonna deal with through the rest of this talk. We wanna share with you, based on scientific evidence, how to choose the best quality carbs, fats, and proteins. So let's start with the carbs. The best, we're talking about the best quality carbohydrate foods, and we have to do a tiny bit of nutrition education. There are three main types of carbohydrates uh, in food, generally speaking. There are sugars, starches, and fiber. These are all carbohydrate foods. I personally call them the carb trio. That's just my personal <laughs> uh, name for them. It's not in the research, but you know, the carb trio, sugar, starch, and fiber. Uh, these are carbohydrates. So when you look at the research, the best quality carbohydrate foods naturally contain all three types of carbohydrates. So the best quality carbs naturally contain, and when I say naturally, I mean, they're not put there by people. They're not put there by food manufacturers. They're naturally found in food. So the best quality carbs naturally have some sugar, some starch and fiber. What kind of carb foods are these? No surprise, these are the whole 
unprocessed, 75% plate fiber foods, fruits, vegetables, beans, cooked whole grains. These foods naturally contain the carb trio. They've got the fiber, they've got the starch, they've got the sugar to differ, di differing amounts, obviously. So guess what? When you look at research studies, they actually give a name to these whole unprocessed fiber foods. They call them high quality carbohydrates. And here is what they mean. These foods are not made by food manufacturers, right? Like we pick an apple off a tree. <laughs> that was not made by a food manufacturer, right? We grow beans in our garden. That was not made by a food manufacturer. Came off a plant in the garden. <clears throat> so these are whole or minimally processed carbohydrate foods. And they call them high quality, but because beside containing the carb trio, they have an abundance of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, as well as protein and healthy fats, the things we need for optimal health. So not only do they have the macros, they also have the micros. So that's, that's why they're high quality carbohydrate foods. And there is a plethora of scientific evidence that a diet composed largely of these high quality carbs is associated with living a longer, healthier life. And, you know, clearly all of us want to eat a diet that's going to help us live a longer, healthier life, right? We don't want to eat a diet that's going to shorten our life and make us sick. So uh, that's the positive, uh, ultimate positive payoff for eating high quality carbs. And here's what they are. You're all familiar with them. Uh, if you're a full plate member, you're very familiar. If you're not, you're probably familiar with them because it's really, this information is getting out all over. High quality carbs are the fruits, the vegetables, the beans and legumes, lentils, peas, and whole grains, nuts and seeds. Now, nuts and seeds have very little carbs, so I think I'm going to leave those out of the carb group. Um, in fact, the amount of carb is so small. We're going to save those for our next discussion. So these are the high quality carbs. Now, if research talks about high quality carbs, it's not surprising that they would also talk about low quality carbs. And what are they? These are processed carbohydrate foods. We often hear them referred to as refined carbs because they're not whole. And the processing that these carb foods are involved in or undergo, <clears throat> it disrupts the carb trio. So, you know, fiber is the nutrient uh, that is most often lost with pr processed carbs, but some natural sugars, some starch can be lost as well. So there's a disruption of the natural carb trio found in high quality carbs. And then you have large losses of health promoting nutrients. Beside the loss of fiber, you lose vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, all of these phytonutrients that we need to be well. It's not just enough to be alive, right? <laughs> we want to be healthy and alive. So it's the antioxidants and phytochemicals that help us be healthy. So here are some pictures of low quality carb, processed carbs. We all know these, right? The chips, the pretzels, the sweets, the candy, uh, the white flour refined breads and buns and refined pastas and, you know, uh, all the processed carb foods. We often call them convenient foods, right? Because we can go to the store and buy a bag when we haven't cooked any high quality carbs or we didn't have time and pull that off the shelf and open that bag and conveniently we can eat these carbs. <clears throat> so in wrapping up this discussion about carbs, we want to think about the 7525 plate. This is our key infographic in full plate living. Um, this is what we try to help people do is to fill 75% of their plate with high quality carbs, high quality fat, high quality protein. And then the other goes in the remaining 25% of the plate. So what are 75% plate carbs. These are, remember, the whole unprocessed carbs. So that would be fresh fruit, 
unfruit, unsweetened frozen fruit, once you add sugar, you're you know taking it out of the high quality category. It would be fresh, plain frozen, no or low sodium canned vegetables, cooked dried beans, you can cook them from scratch, or buy them canned. Low sodium is the best, low sodium canned beans, including peas and lentils. And then cooked whole grains. These are the whole grains. Nothing is removed from the carb trio. Brown rice, all forms of oats are whole grain. Quinoa, whole grain cornmeal, farro, barley, wheat bulgur, and there's others. So those are going to be high quality carbs that are 75% plate carbs. Uh, and then 25% plate carbs. Okay, these are the best 25% plate carb options. They're the healthier 25% plate options, but they're not whole unprocessed foods. So that would be your whole grain bread products, 100% whole grain bread, 100% whole wheat bread, 100% whole grain pastas. These are healthier 25% plate foods, but clearly they're processed foods. And then dried fruits and dried vegetables. They're missing the water. Um, so they've done a lot, a little bit of processing going on, but there's still a lot of nutrition. They have their fiber, generally speaking. And then all whole grain and bean pastas are 25% plate carbs, the healthier carb options. All right, so now let's talk about how to choose the best quality fats. When we think about fat, we need to think about the leading cause of death in America has been for over 100 years, heart disease, unfortunately, it still is. We know from research the direct cause of heart disease is an elevated LDL bad cholesterol. And the direct cause of elevating LDL cholesterol is too much saturated and trans fat in the diet, direct cause. Um, there are other things that can re re elevate LDL that are indirect. So uh, the American Heart Association has this wonderful infographic, I love it, because it makes it so simple. So in order to have the best quality fats, you want to love the unsaturated fats. These are the fats that do not elevate LDL cholesterol and increase risk of heart disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, et cetera. You wanna love those, and we're, I'm gonna tell you what those are. You wanna definitely limit the saturated fats because they directly raise LDL cholesterol. And then you wanna lose the trans fat. I love the fact that the American Heart Association said, lose it. <laughs> they, they didn't make any beans about it. It's quite hard to have zero trans fat in your diet, but if you can get to less than 1%, 1% of calories, you're doing well. But these, uh, these are the fats the Heart Association says, forget it. So what are the trans fats? Let me start with the worst and end up with the best. So you want less than 1% of total calories, but if you can eliminate all trans fat, good for you. Um, and here's where you get the most of it. You uh, fried foods and deep fried foods. They're usually cooked in oils that are partially hydrogenated or that contain trans fat. So you wanna definitely start cutting back on those foods. And if you can, eliminate them. Um, and then you wanna avoid all processed foods that have any of these terms in the ingredient list, partially hydrogenated oil, fully hydrogenated oil, or hydrogenated. When you see that word hydrogenated, red light should go on, <laughs> red flag should go on. Uh-oh, find another product. So that it, avoiding these two things will help you majorly avoid trans fat. You wanna limit the saturated fat. And they, the American Heart Association actually gives you an evidence-based limit. Saturated fat should be no more than six to 7% of your total calorie intake. 5% would be even better. In order to limit your saturated fat, you wanna limit red meat. That's beef, pork, lard, lamb, veal, and poultry, chicken, turkey, duck, and especially if the poultry has the skin on. Now, poultry has less saturated fat than than uh, meat, but it still is high. It's like 30% of um, fat. So, you know, you want to try to limit these sources of saturated fat. Use fat-free and low-fat dairy products that those decrease saturated fat. And here's something that is uh, people find surprising. You really, you want to limit, if not 
uh, uh, really conscientiously limit the use of coconut and tropical oils. Coconut oil, not the coconut that you chew. Coconut oil, coconut cream, coconut milk, palm oil, otherwise known as palm fruit oil, palm kernel oil, all of these tropical oils are very high in saturated fat. Eating coconut uh, does not elevate LDL because of all the fiber found in coconut. You gotta chew it, right? <laughs> and so actually using some shredded coconut, good, but these processed uh, tropical oils elevate LDL. So you really wanna limit those. And here's the fats you wanna love, 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 these unsaturated fats. And actually take the saturated fats and trans fat in your diet and replace them with unsaturated fats. That would be avocados and olives, unsaturated plant oils, they're liquid at room temperature. So if you wanna know if an oil is, you know, very saturated rather, sitting on the counter, it's solid, very saturated. Uh, if it's liquid, it's unsaturated. So olive oil, avocado, canola, corn, safflower, sunflower, soybean. Um, and then eat nuts and seeds, include nuts and seeds, butter, butters, just make sure there's no added sugar and fat in your nut butter, seed butters, and have a one or two ounces of nuts and seeds. That's a small handful, uh, unless your doctor tells you otherwise. And then you want to enjoy, uh, if you choose to, eat two, three ounce serving, servings a week of cold water fatty fish. Lots of unsaturated fat in fatty, cold water fatty fish. Salmon is the one we're all very familiar with, but Arctic char, Atlantic mackerel, sardines, sable fish, black cod, anchovies, rainbow trout, etc. Two, three ounce servings, three to four ounce servings. That's you know a little bit bigger than the palm of your hand uh, of those fish. All right, and so now when we're thinking of our 75-25 plate, the best 75% healthiest fats that go on a 75% plate are avocados and olives. These are whole. Now I know olives are processed. You can get some natural olives if sodium is an issue um, and they're not as processed, but avocados, they're, that's whole fiber food and it's a 75% plate, high, best quality uh, fat. And then the other fats that are healthy options, but are, not, but are processed and they go on the 25% part of the plate, that would be your plant oils. Little, the ones that are liquid at room temperature, your nuts and seeds and nuts and seed butters, those are 25% uh, healthy fat options. The reason they're 25% is because uh, nuts and seeds do not have a lot of water. The char two characteristics of 75% plate foods is they naturally contain fiber and they're very rich in water. So nuts and seeds naturally contain fiber, but they have a very low water content. That's why they're a healthy 25% plate food. And then of course, fish doesn't contain any fiber. So your cold water fish are going to be a healthier 25% plate fat. All right, let's finish by talking about the best quality proteins. Now this is new to some people. Every time I share this, some people are like, oh, <laughs> there are actually two sources of protein, not just one. You get protein from animal, products. So there's animal proteins, meat, poultry, fish, seafood, dairy products, and eggs. And then plants actually contain protein. So there are plant protein sources. Now the richest source of plant protein uh, are beans, legumes, beans, peas, lentils, um, all the dried beans, legumes, peas. These are the richest sources of plant protein. Whole grains have decent plant protein. And then some vegetables actually provide decent plant protein, especially the cooked broccoli and cooked dark leafy greens. Uh, they, you know, when you cook greens, they shrink down. So you end up with more concentrated protein when you eat a cup of cooked greens than when you eat a cup of raw greens. That's how that works. It's not like cooking makes the protein content increase. Um, green peas, a great protein source. Sweet potatoes, a higher protein source. And winter squash in general has more protein. So those are your plant proteins. Now this is very important uh, to think about when we're thinking about choosing the best quality proteins. When we eat protein foods, we're not just eating protein. 
when we eat protein foods, there are other things that it comes, the protein comes packaged with, like fats, cholesterol, carbs, fiber, sodium, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and other substances. So protein foods are not just protein. So we have, and, and they're called packages, protein packages, because you're getting the protein, but there's a lot of other stuff packaged with it. So we have animal protein packages, and we have plant protein packages. And here's what we know from research. Different protein packages have different effects on the health of the body and the risk of disease. Now, I just put this together to illustrate a comparison of a good animal protein package and a, and a good plant protein package. So we, I'm uh, on the, the middle column, you know, we're, you can see on the left column, there's calories, protein, carb, fat, fiber, et cetera. So we have, we're comparing three ounces of broiled salmon to one cup of cooked black beans. If you were gonna replace a serving of meat with plant protein, a three ounce a serving of meat with plant protein, you would wanna have about a cup of cooked beans, not dry, cooked. So when you see, when you look at the calories, they're similar. The beans, uh, you know, have a few more calories than the broiled salmon. Uh, the protein, there's a less, less protein uh, in the cup of beans than the salmon, like six, seven grams. Um, there's no carbohydrate in the salmon, but there's 41 grams of carbohydrate in the beans. And then we can see the saturated fat is more in the salmon than it is in the beans. There's no fiber in the salmon, but beans are a very rich source of fiber, 15 grams in a cup of cooked black beans. There's no phytochemicals in the salmon because phytochemicals are only found in plants. So fish is not a plant, but when we eat plant foods, we get lots of different phytochemicals and beans have many different kinds. And then the fish has cholesterol, whereas the beans do not, and plant foods do not contain any cholesterol. So you can see the difference between a healthy animal protein package and a healthy plant protein package. So here are the best quality animal protein packages based on research studies. The best quality animal protein packages would be your skinless poultry, your cold water fatty fish, as I've already mentioned. Uh, we mentioned those in fats. Fat-free or low-fat dairy does provide protein. So when you use the fat-free, low-fat, it's a better quality protein source. And then egg whites. The egg whites uh, don't have any cholesterol, but a very good source of animal protein. Here are the best quality plant protein packages. That would be your beans, legumes, you know, black beans, kidneys, pintos, chickpeas, lentils, split peas, the whole grains, as I mentioned, oats, brown rice, quinoa, barley, the vegetables, the, and especially the cooked greens, cooked broccoli, peas, sweet potatoes, and then nuts and seeds actually provide some protein, plant protein. Some nuts are richer in protein. Hemp seed is especially rich in protein as a seed. And peanuts are higher in protein content because peanuts are actually a bean with the fat content of a nut but you know, we think of them as nuts. Soy milk, unsweetened soy milk is a great source of protein, plant protein. And then tofu and tempeh made from soybeans, great sources of plant protein, best quality plant protein. So when we look at our 75-25 plate, we remember the 75% plate foods are rich in water and naturally contain fiber. So the best, Protein foods on the 75% plate would be all the plant ones. The beans, the grains, the veggies, the peas, sweet potatoes, tempeh, not tofu. When tofu is processed, um, soybeans are processed to make tofu, the fiber is removed. So tofu would be a good quality 25% plate food, protein food. So other 25% plate healthy protein foods would be your skinless chicken, cold water fish, fat-free dairy, egg whites, tofu, soy milk, obviously has no protein, and then nuts and seeds. Um, I said tofu has no protein. Tofu has protein, no fiber. <laughs> um, and nuts and seeds contain fiber, 
but very little water, but they do provide protein. So that's how you stack your best protein, best protein foods on your 75, 25 plate. What about other protein foods that haven't been mentioned? Here are four uh, processed meat. We don't make any recommendation for those because they have been uh, determined by the World Health Organization to be a class one carcinogen. They do cause cancer, especially colon cancer. They are also associated with increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, uh, and several other disease conditions. That's why we make no recommendation for processed meat. Red meat is not a, a class one carcinogen. It is a probable carcinogen, and it is also associated with increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, and other uh, diseases. Uh, but because it's not it's been determined to cause cancer, we recommend a limited intake, one three ounce serving of red meat a week. Uh, this actually comes from data, global data. One three ounce serving, three ounces is the size of your palm or the size of a deck of cards. Plant-based meats and dairy products. There's a whole lot of them out there these days. Uh, they're processed foods. Oftentimes they're high in fat, sometimes high in sodium. Sometimes they have different additives. A lot of the alternative uh, dairy products, plant-based dairy products use a lot of coconut oil, coconut cream. So you wanna be careful with those. And because they're processed foods, we recommend just one serving a week, one serving a week. And then protein powders. This is very big for a lot of people. Protein powders are highly processed foods from eggs, uh, milk, uh, plants. Um, they are considered a supplement, so they are not regulated by the FDA for safety. So you do not know in these protein powders if you're actually getting what the package says uh, should be in there. They can often uh, be contaminated with um, metals, uh, added calories, added sugar, toxins. Um, so we recommend that you meet your protein needs from the healthiest plant and animal sources of protein that we have discussed. So let's tie it all together. Since uh, it's 35 minutes and I need to end. <laughs> Tying it all together. Uh, here's the recommendations, evidence-based recommendations for macronutrient intake. Carbohydrates should be 40 to 65% of calories. Fat, 20 to 35% of calories. Protein, 10 to 35% of calories. And for optimizing your health, you wanna choose the best quality carb, fat, and protein foods. And it's important at every meal to choose some from each category. You know, you want, you want some good quality carbs, good quality fats, good quality protein at each meal. You know, it's not a good idea just to have a meal that's just carb, right? Or a carb and protein. You want some of each. And interestingly enough, when you eat an array of these good quality proteins, you're actually bringing in all three kinds of macronutrients. So you almost don't have to think about it. Um, the full plate approach is an easy way to choose your healthiest macros. As uh, we talked about when going through this, uh, the slides, but I just wanna summarize it here on this slide. So <clears throat> the best quality 75% plate choices for your carbs are fruit, um, the beans, either you cook them yourself or low sodium canned, um, the, the veggies, either fresh, frozen with nothing added or low sodium canned veggies, and then the cooked whole grains. You know, a, you know quinoa, all the oats are actually whole grain, brown rice, etc. Those are your 75% plate, best quality carbs. Your 75% plate, best quality fats are avocados and olives. Um, and your 75% best quality protein foods are what we already talked about uh, for carbs and fat, your beans, your whole grains, the veggies, the green peas, sweet potatoes, and tempeh. So here are the references. And uh, Michelle, tell us about the full plate membership. Thanks for coming back on. So most of you are already members of Full Plate Living, which means that you have access to the recording of this workshop in the membership. Amy has already posted a link earlier, and I'm sure that she will 
uh, post it again for you to access it. If you don't have a membership, our membership is completely free. You go to fullplateliving.org and you get to sign up. It gives you access to our three programs, our uh, Full Plate Living Weight Loss Program. It also has Yummy, which is kind of a fun little take on a cooking course. And then the Better Blood Sugar course, which is a diabetes course. And so I encourage you, if you don't have your uh, membership, to go ahead and sign up. If you are a member, go in and check out some of the resources. Share this recording with your friends and family that you believe uh, might benefit from hearing it. Or just if you want a refresher or something seemed a little bit more confusing, you can go through it um, at a later time. We are so glad that you joined us today. Um, and we really do appreciate sharing your time with us. Yes, thank you.